Hi, and welcome. Um, for description purposes, my name is Laura Brody, and I am a Caucasian middle-aged woman with brown hair in front of a full bookshelf. And I'm talking here with Emily Taroni. Welcome. Hi, um, my name is Emily Taroni. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and I have short brown hair. And my background is um, a colorful wall behind me. Is it the third year or the fourth year that you've been part of Opulent Mobility? Um, I think I th it's the fourth. I'm trying to remember because yeah, you were there in 2019 and okay. then and 2020, 21. Yep, that would be it. I miss. Yeah. Yeah. But it'll be so nice to have you and share your work. I love what brought you into it because collage, it seems to be really your medium. What got you into that? Um, definitely. Um, I wanted to work on with disability issues, but I've always liked, um, in high school, ripping up stuff, collage, that kind of thing. But then, um, I found that using collage from our culture and all different variations really is a good medium to talk about disability. It is. It is. Um, what sorts of things, when you first started, um, the pieces that I had first seen you, uh, seen you do were like torn out of catalogs where you'd add wheelchair bases to things like sofas and whatnot. Um, how did you get the idea to do that? I'm not sure how I thought of that. I think I was looking through and I was like, I want to create a wheelchair. And then I realized I could use any kind of chairs and add the base and it would be a chair. That's and perfect. I just love that the you would do wheelchair bases on anything. So it would be a sofa, it would be whatever, it would become a power wheelchair. Yes. I started on like chairs and different furniture and then I kind of expanded to like anything like food and stuff like that. And that's been fun. That's what need. Um, has that changed as you've been going through? You said you were starting to look at different types of materials for your collage. Yes. Um, now I've been um, gathering materials about disability from like the 60s to now that have images of people with disabilities, um, educational books, uh, and like kid, children's books about disability. And I'm kind of trying to bring that into the work as well as um, I started to, uh, I did a project with wheelchairs, with my old wheelchair sculpture. So I'm starting to do some more assemblage as well, I'm hoping. That's really neat. Is that something that works well for you, the assemblage? Yes. Um, it's definitely different, but I really enjoy it. It really helps with um, enhance, I think, the work. Absolutely. I'd like to share your piece. Yes, um, it's called Handled. I love that. What do you know? What is the book? I mean, Handling the Handicap. Do you, did you read it before? Or you just love the image? Or I'm not sure how you're seeking out your material. Well, I, um, I've been searching online for different materials um google and stuff and i came across this this is from i think the uk in the 70s and i i bought i ordered it online and um i looked through it there's great images but i love the cover and the colors um yeah. and then it pulled out the the image of the lady is from the book are the arms and hands from the book as well or is that from the other material um that's from magazine material gotcha i think that arm is pamela anderson's arm <laughs> <laughs> there you go it's it's a neat kind of arm as a cradle thing but also arm as a chair yes we had done an interview before for the book that I'm writing about opulent mobility, and you'd been talking about the terms and how a lot of the terms have changed through the years about handicap versus disabled versus crip. What have you been finding for your uh, search terms that you're wanting to find materials for now? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, handicap is definitely an older um 
term, although people, it's still used in like handicap parking, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. Um, crippled, also a term that's old, but that has helped me find older stuff. Um, but it's really interesting how that term was kind of co-opted by the community towards Crip. I, I really love that. Yeah, taking pride in it instead. Yeah. Because you do use a lot of those sorts of bright um, contrast and colors in your pieces. So it's great to have the books covers that already do it for you. Yeah, this one's really great. And I, um, for this one, I didn't add any um, mixed media. Like sometimes I add paint and stuff. Um, this one, I just took the cover and then I used this kind of foam tape that's a little thicker. So the hands and the woman are are raised a little bit up. So sort of floating off of it? Yes. Nice. You. you were saying that the collage was also a pretty straightforward one that you can do regardless of what your body is doing. Yes, definitely. Um, I do most of my work from my um, recliner uh, lift chair. Mm-hmm. And it's been very easy for me to do it through that. The assemblage, some of the bigger stuff I have to adjust, but um yeah, I can always return to the smaller stuff. And that's been a really helpful tool. Pretty cool way to do it. Um for assemblage, what kinds of pieces are you wanting to use? What kind of uh, materials call to you? Um recently I've been collecting um pill bottles, my pill bottles, mm. and um collaging on them. I haven't had any finished pieces with that, but I'm also looking into using my um, my BiPAP masks, the ones that mm -hmm. I got rid of in um, some assemblage. Nice. So are you covering them with pieces of paper as well? Yes. That, nice. Um, I'm looking at that, doing that, yeah. Neat. Looking forward to seeing more of that. No. Is there, was there something about assemblage is, I mean, apart from the tearing apart and putting things together that really said, that really called to you? Um, I love a lot of the assemblage artist's work. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of called to me. Also, just, I really gotten into using recycled materials or materials, especially with the magazines and the books. And now I want to do more of that using stuff. I think that's important. Yeah, especially with used medical equipment. It seems like a pretty great thing to do, uh, a great way to reuse it, because so little of it can be reused or recycled. Yeah, definitely. And I was thinking about that as well, how there's a lot of people with disabilities would probably contribute a lot of um waste necessary because of our disabilities um and how like the straw thing how that kind of got how they wanted yeah. to force people to use straws and i mean to stop using plastic straws and how it's kind of been put on us but that i kind of want to make a statement of how it's necessary these small things and that we're still more contributing and that kind of thing yeah and that ultimately if you really want to talk about plastic waste all of it is a problem of course and there are people who are doing so much more <laughs> it's yeah. that, that's yeah. uh, make trying to make you feel guilty for your the things you actually need to keep yourself alive and well is not appropriate Yes, exactly. And yeah, that's what I kind of wanted to communicate to as well. And how like individuals, like a small percentage is like these big companies are the problem. If there are things you need, there are things you actually need. And that's important. Yeah. And we've been pretty innovative in coming up with ways like the disability community is definitely the most innovative and can adapt. Have you been finding there are a lot of other people in the disability community who inspire you to figure out new ways to make things happen? Yeah, definitely. Um, we're definitely the most 
um, because of our conditions, I feel like we're uh, like ha the first like hackers <laughs> of how to do things and seeing stuff on social media, following the community has really um, inspired me to do that. It's really neat. I mean, you just come off of working with Diversability, a disability organization, and it sounds like that was also a really great resource for you and a lot of really good information and a lot of great people. Yes, it was um, It was actually um, Respectability. Oh, Respectability. I'm sorry. No problem. Um, and yeah, I did a, fel a communications fellowship with them. And I got to do a lot of disability history, social media work, and that was really informative and informed my work. That's really cool. What sorts of things do you feel like are going to speak to the rest of your work later that you got from there? Um, definitely um, the access needs of, of all different people with disabilities definitely um, has opened my eyes to more of that, and I want to reflect that in the work. Um, and I want to use more images from disability history to mm. kind of show that history. That's really great. What have you been working on now? Um, recently, I have been doing a lot of book cover collages. I'm using like the hard covers as a base. Um, some of them, I've kept the whole cover intact, so it's like a book, an altered book. Um, and I've been doing this with uh, New York Crit Club, the Canopy Program. I've been meeting with them throughout the year. Mm. Doing, um, mentorship, so that's been good. That's really great. Like, we do like crits, um, and then we get to meet with like gallerists and other artists and hear their perspectives and advice. Uh, do you have any shows coming up then? Um, yes, in January, I have a show at 90, the, a group show with the New York um, Crit Club. And right now, um, I'm part of the, I think it's called the WAE Open at Heidi Gallery in New Jersey. Sounds like you've been keeping yourself really busy and creative. Yes, definitely. And I'm excited to continue. That's really wonderful. Is there something else that you'd like to really like to do more of for future artworks? Um, yes, I've been looking at doing um, maybe some larger pieces mm. and some more public art I'd like to do. That would be very cool. What kinds of things? Um, um, I think like posters and stuff, and I've been thinking of doing um, um, just putting up small because I have in the past small little things around like, um, on like the backs of signs and stuff. Mm -hmm. As like a street art thing, but I'm also looking at like the public art calls. That should be really neat. I'm kind of excited about that. Um. Sometimes I associate public art with things that are just enormous and just not materials that I use. So I'm not always sure what to do. So I'm really curious what you'd like to do with public art. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've been thinking about, um, I know like there's a lot of like billboard ones, if I could blow up my pieces, my chair sculptures, I've been trying to get them um, to be shown at like um a college that would be great yeah it would be interesting to see like what would make that I'm, I'm guessing with collage there are ways to seal it so there would be much more you know appropriate for outdoor use or whatever i uh, do you want to do outdoor pieces indoor pieces um definitely i think both um for the two chairs that i did i sealed it with um i forget it's like an outdoor um, sealer of wood. Mm -hmm. that I think worked pretty well. That sounds like that'd be a really good one. It's just a weatherproof sealer, right? Yeah. Really cool. Um, I'm just remembering there was actually a piece. So I left um, two of my 
um, people, they were like with butterfly images, I laminated them and um, left them at a uh, box, a clothing box in my town. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of there for a year and both of them kind of got faded. Um, and so I took them recently and made two like pieces out of those. And that was a really cool experience. So I might do something like that in the future. That should be really fun. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I know people sometimes who will do that as sticker art. Yeah, definitely. And I've been, those ones I did, like the clothing boxes are magnetic. So I've just put. Mm. That works. That works pretty well. Yeah, I know. Cause you get uh, the, that flat magnet sheet type of stuff that you can put anything onto. Yeah. Definitely. A little art, art and surprise places. Yeah, that's what I like. Would want to do and get it out into the public for everyone to see. That'd be pretty neat. Uh, would you want to bring somebody along as a, like to document the process to photograph it? Yeah, definitely. That would be a good idea. Yeah, oh, uh, Instagram that kind of thing. Kind of a fun thing, just just because you know. Anytime you're doing something like that, it's it's necessarily transitory, you know. But that way you can you can have the picture for as long as you like. Oh, boy. Do you have some favorite collage artists or assemblage artists? Um, definitely. Um I love Hannah Hawk. Um Faith Ringgold. I really like her work. Beautiful stuff. Yeah. So definitely inspiring to get into that um, assembly more. That'll be really neat. I, I love story quilts. So. Yeah. Me too. That's wonderful. That's interesting. I didn't necessarily think of, of quilting as assemblage, but it can be. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm just really glad that you could be part of this again. Um, What, what brought you to opulent mobility? What, made you think this would be a good place to try um i saw this on like an open call thing and i i hadn't been showing any of my collage work or really any work until mm. uh, the 2019 show that was my first kind of submission and that kind of got me started to continue so it's, i love the um this show and this organization i'm so glad you could do it i'm so glad it would encourage you to do more because yes absolutely you should it's great it, ever since then, you've been showing all over the place. Yeah, it's definitely inspired me to continue. I kind of didn't think about um, being an artist. I thought that was kind of a hard thing to be, but this show kind of got me started on it. That's pretty cool. I mean, I, I think everything can be difficult. Absolutely. <laughs> and art's not necessarily the easiest road, but there are ways to use it in there are so many ways to use it many um different barriers and stuff um especially for people with disabilities but it's been very um i've learned a lot um through the online um resources and i'd really like to help work with other disabled artists and kind of share what i've learned that future. would be great yeah all right let's work on that definitely and thank you so much